Hey there, hope all is well. Wanted to take a quick minute on this Sunday afternoon-ish and share with you, uh, for those that are uh, my, my readers out there that want to take uh, a moment to read through something, I think, and give you a good idea as to how hyperinflations tend to play out. And so there's more than enough historical examples throughout time that we can learn from. And I was actually... Uh, after watching Greg Hunter's uh, interview with Michael Pinto, of which I'm going to have Michael Pinto on in a couple of weeks to get more of uh, his analysis and take on what's happening now. But uh, the words Weimar was thrown out a lot. And so I went to my bookshelf just to thumb through uh, a pages of a book that I have not mentioned up to this point that I think is very um, informative as to what happened with the Weimar Republic, as well as I have some books on Zimbabwe and had a chance to interview some people before that shine light on Zimbabwe being a more recent hyperinflation. But here's a book here that I want to share. And so I'm actually going to, I found a digital copy of this book that I'm going to put beneath this video here that you guys can read through. But as I was thumbing through this book here, you know, it, I, you can only help but see so many scenarios of what's currently going on now reoccurring. And so history always does, a, uh, it always repeats in, in just new form and fashions. But yet what might be different about this current lead up to a excessive inflation that probably touches on hyperinflation is the fact that we're being transitioned into a digital world and so I don't foresee a time where there'll be you know marks and so I actually have I actually have some some Zimbabwe not Zimbabwe but some Reich marks from Germany during the 20s and 30s and so these are definitely some collector pieces but yet I use these as a reminder of history and how over time things tend to repeat themselves but yet always leave clues and so here I actually have what this is called a, a five fifty billion or fifty millionaire mark and I'll actually as you guys can see this is a very crisp and fresh bill and the paper is you know onion like and it's different but this was initially printed in 19 in November 3rd 1923 so this is an actual official bill that was printed and so imagine one day having your normal 5, 10, 20, 30, 50s, 100s, whatever, and then in the height of the hyperinflation, them trying to roll off a 50 million mark bill. And then here, this is, the paper is even just a little torn, but this is 100 million marks. So from a 50 to 100 million marks, all at the time where people are scrambling to get rid of these things. And so there's a couple scenarios in this book that just really makes you it touches your heart. I remember when I read this book, this book I read it, you know, two or three years ago. When I read this book, it left me feeling a sense of like, dang, like I, I felt some of the pain that was discussed in this book from all the stories of uh, the, the, the person. Uh, this book was written in 1975, but the person had a chance to interview a lot of people that were still alive during our time and to hear the stories. Um, it's just stuff that just really makes you think. And here, on page 119, it talks about just how overnight the prices of everything went up and people were scrambling to get rid of the paper. And So I want to take a minute for my readers to share with you guys. If you want to actually read this book here, I'll put it in the link below. But yet, history always repeats itself. But this time, it's going to be a little bit different, but yet the results will still be the same. Because they're going to print as much as they can or increase the, 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 the balance sheet and all that stuff that comes with that as much as they want. But then again, you cannot replace the amount of goods and services out there that people all scramble to get as things pick up. So this is a great uh, read that, you know, for the people out there who are interested. I'll put this beneath here because ultimately what it boils down to is, is it says when money dies and as money dies, promises are broken. And so right now, I don't think the Federal Reserve note is no different. But yet the transition will be different because we're going digital more than likely in some form or fashion. But there will still be a massive amount of broken promises similar to these notes here, which all have, you know, in German, I can't speak German, but they all have some type of promise to pay the bearer on whatever on, on demand. The typical spill that you see on currency, on currency about it, giving a promise to the, to the holder of these papers. But as you can see, over 80 some years later, this, this paper here is worth something because it's a historical piece, not because it actually is able to purchase anything. So I want to take a quick minute and share with you guys, for those that are interested in reading, a, a good book that I would recommend. And the free version is beneath this video here. You click it, download it, and you can read it and uh, get a chance to, you know, keep yourself busy on this Sunday or Monday or whatever, uh, you're, whenever you're watching this. But other than that, hope all is well. Enjoy your day. But when money dies, promises are broken. So keep that in mind. See you later.